Uh, but joining us now to discuss this really interesting race is uh, Scott Sheeran, the National Party candidate uh, for Wellington Central. Scott, thank you for joining us. Good morning, Sean. How are you? I'm this very well, thank you. Now, you ball. must be... We, we had a coffee, and I'll, I'll disclose this. We caught up for a coffee because I hadn't met Scott before, and, of course, I'm, I'm a Wellingtonian. Um, and did I not say to you, Scott... Your best chance at winning this electorate is if Greens and Labor cut each other's throats. Well, you did say that, Sean. Maybe, maybe you're a wise man. Well, well so the, look, that's, fact, and it looks like that's what's happening, right? Well, yeah. Look, um, I don't think I'd put it quite like <laughs> you put it. I think the issue here is that people have three different choices, you know, three different ways of seeing how to do things both, you know, at central government, but also we're sort of, you know, connected a bit with local government as well. And I think what's really amazing is that, you know, since the last election and the numbers that they showed, Nationals doubled its support. Yeah, and now actually, that's the other Labour thing. And Green, the party vote on this poll shows National, yeah, well, what, the, at 28% that, or something, 29 Yeah, but, yeah that's right. Uh, but also... It shows that both Labor and Greens have lost support. Yeah. And I think that's because Wellingtonians know we can do better. Yeah. Where are you on the list, Scott? I'm a, at the beautiful number of 45. Okay, so you haven't... This is it for you. This is one roll of the dice, right? You don't get a second bite at the cherry. Oh, uh, look, mate, I'm in, I'm in this for, for the long haul. So I'm giving it my best shot for National now, but... You know, I've spent a lot of my life in public service. I've worked in the public service, actually, in Wellington, three different places. But I'm, I'm keen for the long haul. I want to make a contribution to this country. I love it. I love Wellington. And, you know, I want my kids to grow up in a country that is, you know, an amazing place sort of culturally, but also an amazing place economically. All right. You are a newbie. You haven't campaigned before. Tamith Paul clearly has. And Omar Ibrahim, I think, has. So can I be honest? I didn't even know who he was before he got the nomination for Wellington. I didn't even know he was an MP. Um, how have you found campaigning, getting out there, knocking on doors, and what have the people you have met said to you about Wellington? So, look, I've loved campaigning. Um, I really like people, and that's probably one of the reasons I'm, I'm doing this. And I think... I heard you introduce me as having a slightly pointy head. Um, you know, look, I've worked in the freezing works. I've worked at Pack and Save. Oh, no, don't do the working all, class cr credentials, Scott. No one's going yeah, to no. believe you. You're, you you're a doctor, right? This, this, and you work in foreign affairs. Back, Come friend. on, you are not going to be able no. to divest yourselves yourself of a certain elitist label. Well, look, put it this way, Sean. I'm a regular guy who's done irregular things, okay? And I think that that shows through on the campaign trail because I'm talking to everybody and what I'm finding is people do think that Wellington's headed in the wrong direction. They're really upset about the way the council's running things. They're upset about the lack of attention from central government. And really, we need, we need to address housing, transport and, inv and investment in the city. We've got to create great jobs. And I just think there's what I'm hearing from people is they say that, look, the prioritisation of the spending's all wrong from the council, from, from government, are saying nothing's being delivered. And I think one of the biggest things for me, and one of the reasons why the polls are where they are, is that a lot of people feel like their voices are not heard. That, you know, they might participate in consultation about the cycleway design, or, you know, they might be asked about what they think on some central yeah. government policy, and actually no one cares. They yeah. just say, no, nope, we've got the answer, we know better than you. Yeah. And the thing is, what I'm saying to people is that I'm not going to tell you what you should care about, but I'll listen to what you have to say. And as a Wellington Central MP, I'll take that to Parliament. Yeah, yeah. The other thing, Scott, is, I mean, social housing in central Wellington has been like a cancer for retail and street life in Wellington. Um, and even, you know, a left-wing publication like Stuff has been writing pieces about the dangers of Cuba Street, where this office is in Manor Street, we have people regularly defecating and a cohort of regular beggars who cause all sorts of social problems in the street. And a council, to be honest, just doesn't seem to be interested in doing anything about that. Yeah, I mean, look, I've heard that a lot. Um, and I went actually went not that long ago to a meeting of HOSPO 
um, owners on Courtney Place, with the police and also with um, people from the council. And, you know, look, it's a difficult issue, but one thing that's very clear is that all the social housing that moved into central Wellington, you know, they said, look, we'll, we'll bring it in with some great wraparound services and, yeah, you know, don't you worry. Mm. And they didn't. And, I mean, look, even Poniki Promise, it doesn't include anybody who knows anything about mental health, like Te Whatu Order mm. or the Social Wellbeing Agency or Kāinga Order. It's just not been executed well, and it's caused real problems for the city. Yeah. Scott, the other problem I would note, unless they're super high profile like Preble and I guess Grant Robertson, Wellington is so political and so close to Parliament and politics that actually its local MP often kind of disappears and the political issues for Wellingtonians disappear because it's dominated by what's happening down at the big house, at the Beehive. Yeah, look, I think there's challenges there at both ends because there's challenges at the small end. Like, I got involved in a situation in Makara, which is, of course, in Wellington Central, not even to know that, yeah, yeah. where a number of school kids were told to get off the school bus by the Ministry of Education. And over six weeks, the community got pushed back by the Ministry. Um, people wrote to Grant Robertson's office, and he said, I've written to the Ministry of Education. And then Wellington High School took it up with Ministry of Education. And that's because they I were in the right Brisbane. zone to be allowed to be on that bus, even though Macra it's well, the only bus. Yeah, well, exactly. But the bus was only taking them over the hill into Karori. And, um, but, look, I called a uh, press conference down at the Macra Model School, invited all the parents along, and, uh, oh, somebody from Grant Robertson's office turned up, and um, the, the Labor candidate turned up. And after six weeks, well, gosh, the whole problem was fixed in 24 hours. And, you know, when I, I went and gave a talk at Wellington High School, um, candidates chat, uh, about a week ago, and afterwards one of the students came up to me and said, thank you, Scott, you, you, your intervention meant that I could continue to catch the bus to go to the school. And, like, right. that made me feel very good. Yeah. But then at the other end, as you're saying, you know, where's the infrastructure investment on Wellington Central? I mean, one of the biggest things I'm hearing is people say, you know, I... I will vote for National if you start that second Mount Vic Tunnel. Oh, oh, yeah, has... Let's Get in Wellington Moving is the most misnamed um, bloody suite of policies or, or BS, to be honest, I've ever seen in my life. Scott, I want to, uh, we're going to take a commercial break, and would you mind afterwards, and this is only, and stay on the line, because I want to give you the nutters test. Okay, we've been talking a lot about candidates, one candidate from... Um, from New Zealand First in particular and their views on certain things. And I want to check that you're not a nutter, OK? You'd be happy with that, wouldn't you? Well, yeah, as you long would... as it's to do with Wellington Central issues... Oh, it absolutely is. I can assure you of that. A... And I'll explain that before <laughs> every question.